Good day everyone. Welcome to the Bowie Knife Challenge, Bronze Age style. So I was inspired by all the YouTubers doing the Bowie Knife Challenge, and I thought, even though I'm not a blacksmith, I wanted to give it a try the way I know how, bronze style. For me, that begins by making a pattern out of wood that I will later cast in sand. I trace my drawing on a thin piece of balsa wood and from there I can actually start making the model of the blade. So we have our blade blank roughed in, but I also want to grind in at least some of the bevel before I cast it. One thing I wish I knew how you bladesmiths do it, how do you find the center of the blade? For now I just eyeballed it, but there's got to be a more precise way. Once I have the blade shaped enough, I embed it in an oil-based sand called Petrobond. Once I remove the knife blank, it gives me a negative space that allows me to pour the metal in. I'll then have an exact copy of that pattern. Now for metal, I'm going to be using aluminum bronze. It's a mixture of about 90% copper, 10% aluminum. Aluminum bronze is one of the hardest of the bronzes, so it's a good bronze for blades. 10% aluminum bronze turned out to be a mistake, but I'll show you why a little later. I use my furnace as a makeshift forge to flatten out a bar of copper, but we'll get back to that later on. Once the copper is molten, I'll add the aluminum, and it melts in no time. So we finally got some metal to work with. This turned out beautifully. The next step is to clean it up. We're going to be using this bad boy, the most underpowered belt sander in the world. Hopefully it can handle this. Harbor Freight makes cheap tools, but it doesn't make good tools. And this sander is about maxed out with this project. So the first minor issue, you can see right here where the metal came in. These two points are points of metal shrinkage. I'm going to have to grind a little bit more to blend that out. On the other side at the same point, I think that's caused to the metal turbulence. Two issues with casting metal, metal shrinkage and turbulence. The better you are at casting, the less those things are an issue. I've still got a lot to learn. So I spent a fair bit of time at the grinder. You can see there's some real small hairline cracks there. I think what we're going to do instead of grinding them out is hide them. Now in Bronze Age weapons, they would harden them by beating them. That aligned all the molecules so they're good and strong. If I want this blade to be as strong as I can, I'm going to have to work harden it anyway. So I'm going to sand those out and then peen the whole surface to work harden it. It's important to sand the surface before you peen it because if there's any scratches left, those stay with the peened look and then you can't get rid of them. Typically the work hardening would only be done at the cutting edge of the blade, but since I'm going for an artistic look, I decided to peen the whole thing. But remember when I said 10% aluminum was too much? Sometimes learning is just not very fun. So work hardening isn't gonna work. While I was work hardening it, I saw a big crack form all the way across the blade. So that's not gonna work. As a result of the peening, the blade began to warp and then it eventually just cracked all the way up the blade. I know I fail a lot, but honestly, I don't do this on purpose. We're gonna have to pour a new blade. There's no way I can save this. When you mix too much aluminum with copper, the alloy becomes very brittle and 10% was too much. This time I'm gonna shoot for about 5% aluminum to copper. This should make for a much less brittle alloy. I'm also going to try a vertical pour in hopes that it eliminates some of the turbulence issues. The idea being if it fills from the bottom up, it'll produce a more laminar flow. 
Whoops. That filled a little quicker than I planned. I think we're in good shape. Next thing I'm going to try to do is grind in the bevel. And I don't know if it's better to do it with this thing or just a regular file. Now I don't have an actual file guide, but I tried to make one myself and it seemed to serve the purpose. So I think I'm going to take a break from grinding for a while and start fitting up the guard. I've never made a guard. So let's give that a try. So going back to that copper bar I tried to flatten, that's what I'm going to use to make the guard. I'm not quite sure how, but I'll chew at it until we get one. A little extra blacksmithing practice to get a little, little closer. Someday I'll get a real forge. I used a drill press to drill a few holes in the guard and then a dremel and a file to connect them. The guard is roughly taking shape, but I think I need to get started on the handle. I think I kind of want to shape the handle and the guard together because I don't really know how to put them together. So for that, I found this scrap of eat bay wood. Carpenter threw it away on a rich person project. So I'm going to see if I can make a handle out of this. Again, I used the drill press to drill holes where the tang was supposed to go and as much as the Dremel could reach to connect the holes. Well, that works good up to about there. Now, I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it, but I've seen on Forged and Fire where they'll heat up the tang and burn it into the handle to make the hole. So... So I used a combination of burning and the drill press to try to get as much of the material out of the tang hole as I could. I'm going to try to fix this gap between the blade and the guard and this really gives me a whole new appreciation for the craftsmanship and precision of a good bladesmith. For the handle, I just drew an outline and took it to my belt sander. But this wood is about the hardest I've ever seen. It's kind of a pain to work. Once the handle took shape, then I took it over to the drill press to drill holes for the pins. There's a little wobble in the handle, so I'm hoping that tightens up and the pins are in it. Now it's time to hand sand the blade and the guard to get it shining. Retouch up that bevel and get the thing sharp. A little epoxy to hold everything together while trying not to get it all over everything. Hammer in the pins and some oil for the last finishing touch and we're done. What do you think of that? It's pretty sharp. 
I don't know if it would survive a strength challenge on forged and fire, and I don't know if it will keep its edge even as much as a mild steel, but I still think it's pretty cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.